Good afternoon. I'm Gloria Waters. I'm the Vice President and Associate Provost for Research here at Boston University. And I'm absolutely delighted uh, to welcome you to this celebration of the opening and the dedication of the Rajan Kilachan Center for Integrated Life Sciences and Engineering. An important goal of research universities is not only to provide an excellent education for our students, but also to push the frontiers of science forward in ways that will really have a, the potential to improve lives. Over the past decade, we've thought really hard about how we can have the most impact. What are the areas that we can be uniquely excellent in? What are the most challenging and important questions that we can address? And what are the characteristics of the faculty and the leadership that we need in order to be most successful? It's become really clear that while it's critical to have excellence in particular disciplines, this alone is not gonna allow us to create the kind of breakthroughs that we really aspire to have. So over the past several years, we've made a significant change in how we are organized to carry out research. And we've created university-wide research centers and institutes that really allow faculty to work across uh, different departments in specific areas. So the establishment of the Rajan Kilachan Center and the Kilachan Fund really allows us to do that at a level that we hadn't quite uh, anticipated as we uh, first entered into the building of, of this building. Uh, these things allowed us to both build the physical infrastructure and also the human capital that's really needed to solve problems that transcend, trans that transcend disciplinary uh, boundaries. So as you'll see, there are tours uh, after this uh, brief uh, event here. The Kilachon Center is really a state-of-the-art facility, and it brings together life scientists, engineers, computer scientists, physicists, physicians, um, in a collection of three interdisciplinary centers. The three centers are the Biological Design Center, which is led uh, by Dr. Chris Chen, who's a professor of biomedical engineering. The Center for Systems Neuroscience, which is led by Dr. Michael Hasselmo, Professor of uh, Psychological and Brain Sciences. And the Center for Sensory Communication and Emerging Neural Technologies, which is led by Dr. Barb Shin Cunningham, uh, Professor of Biomedical Engineering. And the Kilachan Center also houses our new Cognitive Neuroimaging Center, which is led by Dr. Chantal Stern. The faculty in this building are working on incredibly complex and important problems, and they range from developing new techniques uh, to help us understand how the brain works, to growing organs for transplant, and to developing new hearing aids that are gonna help people uh, vastly improve their hearing in noisy situations. The Kilachan Center really allows us to build for the future. It can accommodate a variety of types of research, and it's designed so that the space can be reconfigured based on where the science takes us in the future. Um, in addition, about 30% of the lab space is not yet built out, and that allows us to hire new faculty uh, whose lab needs we do not yet know. And finally, I'd say that the building has really specifically been designed to encourage collaboration. One of the uh, features, I think, of faculty at Boston University is that they are highly collaborative, and this kind of a physical space really allows them to be so across many different, uh, degree, many different disciplines. And part of the goal of the building is to actually create community um, and to create more of this collaboration. And it's to create community not just for the faculty who happen to have their offices and labs in the building, but also for faculty who work in these areas but whose offices are outside of this building on other parts of the campus. So there are many groups uh, that we need to thank uh, for actually doing this terrific job of bringing uh, what was actually uh, a parking lot um, a little more than 24 months ago into this incredible building that we have today. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank uh, Payette and the design team that was led by Jim Collins and Charlie Klee, the mechanical and electrical engineers from Arup, uh, Turner Construction, led by Peter Hamill and Maureen Kilpatrick, and um, Emil Giordano, and also the Compass Project Management Team, led by Tim Bonfanti and Brian Kelly. 
Uh, I'd also like to make a special uh, call out to Carson Fox, who's the artist uh, who designed and installed the beautiful installation, the Blue Green Rainbow, which is on the first floor here, which you can have a look at afterwards. And then finally, uh, the BU construction management team that was led by David Flynn, uh, Walt Meisner, uh, Associate VP for Operations, Amy Barrett in the Provost's office, and also Kevin Gonzalez, who's the Director of Operations for the building. The incredible uh, dedication and attention to detail that all of these people had really allowed us to move the faculty and their science into this building in an amazing uh, shortly, short period of time. So I, I would just say in the end that it's been an amazing year for research at Boston University. We've hired many wonderful new faculty. Our College of Engineering has had a 38% increase um, in grant funding over the last year. And our College of Arts and Sciences had an 18% increase. Our faculty have, uh, have received some incredibly significant grants, such as the $250 million grant uh, on antimicrobial resistance to Kevin Outerson in our law school. Uh, we received an NSF uh, major research instrumentation grant uh, to purchase the MRI in this building. Um, and this week was the announcement of a $20 million engineering research center, which is led by Dave Bishop, uh, professor of electrical and computer engineering, and Chris Chen, uh, one of the center directors in this building. I'm really certain that the Kilichon Center and the Kilichon Fund that will allow us to flexibly invest in the most promising, high risk and innovative areas that our faculty are working in will just only amplify and uh, really ensure our efforts are successful in this regard. So thank you. So it's now my pleasure uh, to introduce Dr. Robert A. Brown. Uh, he's the 10th president of Boston University. Dr. Brown took over the leadership of the university in 2005, and he's, under, he's overseen the tremendous growth in the quality and stature of the university over the past decade, as well as the leadership of Boston University's first ever very successful capital campaign. President Brown. Thank you, Gloria. This is really a singular day in the history of Boston University because we celebrate, celebrate really two very related announcements. One is the official, official opening of this magnificent building. The second is the announcement of a historic gift to the university. Let me give you just a bit of context. Today, all major research universities talk about being interdisciplinary to foster collaboration across their campuses the in institutions are only differentiated by the real commitment they have to those collaborations. We pride ourselves on the level and depth of collaboration across the campus. Why is this so important? Many of today's most pressing problems cannot be solved adequately by people working in their traditional disciplinary silos. We have to find ways of bridging together uncommon teams of experts from disparate disciplines, if we're really going to make progress on these grand challenges like human health, public health, urban welfare, food security, education, and the environment. I think we're trying to do this with the full weight of Boston University. Today's announcement in total is a $250 million commitment by the university and by our generous benefactor to our faculty, staff, and students to work at the nexus of life science and engineering, addressing these challenging problems. I believe that bringing together computer science, engineering tools, and the expertise from the emerging life science disciplines, we have a place to have a large impact in some of these most pressing issues. We're very excited today about the opportunities. And you can see, as Gloria said, with the announcement of the National Science Foundation grant earlier this week, that we have the capability to have really a, a tremendous impact. This is a, a marvelous 180,000 square foot facility, if we don't blow down in the next few minutes. Uh, in which, when you go through it, you will see that it has been designed, as Gloria said, to both be flexible space and to be totally agnostic 
to where the investigator came from, what discipline they're in, and be, uh, have the ability to be the home for people from very different fields working collaboratively on problems. Everything about the building shows that, whether it be the open laboratory footprints or the glass walls or the collaboration spaces. The second announcement we're making is, I think, the most exciting. And it's certainly the most exciting in our history. We are officially announcing what we, we made public this morning, that trustee and friend Rajan Kilichan, graduate of the Questrom School of Business with an MBA in 1974, will give $115 million to support our efforts at, in life science and engineering. In, in recognition of his incredible generosity, CELSI, as it has been known all through construction and design, is now known as the Kilichon Center. His visionary gift will support both the construction of the building, but most importantly, endow a $100 million research fund that will support this kind of collaborative research in perpetuity. His vision will catalyze an endless stream of research with investigators we cannot imagine today where they will come together, how they'll come together to work together on these most important problems. In a minute, um, we will officially cut the ribbon and give the podium to Rajan. But before I do that, I'd like to introduce another very honored guest who's with us. Boston University is embedded in a great city where the leadership of that city understands the role of innovation especially the life sciences, and the important role it plays both in helping uh, improve the human condition, but also improving the economy and the environment for all the citizens of the city. We have leaders here in the city that understand the importance of this facility and the research fund we're here to celebrate. No one works more tirelessly for us to be an innovation hub and for us to thrive than the mayor of Boston, Marty Walsh. And we're very pleased to have Marty with us today. Mayor Walsh. Thank you very much, President Brown. And, and um, I want to thank you and, and Chairman Feld for, for your great work here at BU, uh, Gloria uh, also, and, and all the trustees that are here, and the entire Boston University community. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I especially want to thank um, the Kellishan family um, for this generous gift uh, in our city um, and in our state and in our country. And I think that uh, it goes to this investment is certainly uh, incredible. And I think that today uh, is more fitting now than it had been in the past because of what's going on in the world. And I really think that this is a great opportunity to be able to talk and promote about life sciences and health and, and what can be done in this building here. Uh, and I'm gonna talk in a second about what happened in this building when it was being built. Um, two years ago, I joined many of you to celebrate the groundbreaking here. We talked about the promise that this project had. We talked about how Boston was becoming a world leader in life sciences and, and how Silsi would help take us to the next level. Uh, we had some high expectations. And I've got, to, I've got to say, this incredible facility has surpassed them. If you haven't had a chance to go in and take a peek around, uh, make sure you go in before you leave today. It's going to bring life scientists, engineers, and doctors together in a 21st century setting. And that's really incredible. And that's, what, that, that's some of what's so great about this. It will be a collaborative, collaborative environment that will lead exploration, discovery, and life-changing breakthroughs. Um, on this 21st century campus. This is a pivotal moment for our city here in Boston. Our city is growing like it's never grown before. It's evolving. It's becoming a world headquarters city. Our biomedical industry is booming. We're even hosting the Bio International Conference next year here in our city. And it's becoming uh, an amazing creativity uh, and opportunity um, with institutions like Boston University and, and what the gift today does and what this building does. I want to give a special thank you to President Brown and the Boston University community for being such good neighbors throughout this process. 
uh, working really hard to make sure that the community feels comfortable. Uh, they took an empty lot and turned it into a nine-story cutting-edge research building. And when you're on the ninth floor today, you'll see the Red Sox. You can't see the field, but you'll see the fans. And that means if there's a lot of fans in the stadium, we're winning. And if they're not that many, we'll obviously know the, what's happening. But what's also going to happen is Silsi's going to help attract the best and brightest from all over the world to come to our city, to this university, to study and to learn. It's going to be a pipeline for talent in our growing life science industry. And it's going to prove also more pathways of success right here in this community as well. This quarter of a billion dollar investment right here on ComAv is certainly going to open up pathways and doors for people. But I also just want to, as I said earlier, BU's actually hired apprentices from the Boston Reentry Program called Operation Exit to work in construction. And we got one of our young men with us today, Greg Radden, who is over here. I want to thank Greg. Um, like me, Greg wasn't always focused on his career. Like me, Greg and other people made it, like all of us in the, right in front of me, I don't care who you are, we all made mistakes in our life. And like a lot of you, Greg has turned his life completely around and he's heading into the fourth year of his apprenticeship as a sheet metal worker who worked on this project. Greg is setting down a foundation for his family and Greg, Greg is also setting himself an example for a generation of other young people coming behind him to let them know that what he's breaking down barriers for them, much to what this building is going to do after it got built, but it also did it during it getting built. I want to thank you, Greg, for being with us today. Be here today. When we think about the future of science and innovation, they're looking at Boston. Years from now, when people ask when Boston became a global leader in these fields, they're going to point to these years. They're going to point to this building. They're going to point to this university. They're going to point to the past alums of this university, and they're going to say thank you. They're going to say thank you because Boston University's community continues to be a driving force in this movement. I want to congratulate BU on this next chapter of the great history of this great institution. Thank you. I'm now pleased to introduce Mr. Kenneth Feld, Chairman of the Boston University Board of Trustees. Mr. Feld is CEO of Feld Entertainment, which operates notable live entertainment shows such as Disney on Ice and Monster Jam. Um, Kenneth is a graduate of the Questrom School of Business and comes from a triple terrier family with his wife Bonnie and also uh, daughter Alana being BU alums. Mr. Feld. Thank you very much. Because our family's in the entertainment business, my children, all three of uh, my grown daughters, they run the day-to-day -day operations and they stay tuned to what's appealing and what's new and explain it to me. So then hopefully I can understand it. So when the board first learned about the gleam in Bob's eye that became Silsey, I kept thinking, I get it. This is all about mashups. In the music world, a mashup is a recording created by digitally combining two or more musical pieces by overlaying the vocal track of one song over the instrumental track of another. As playful and freeform as a mashup may seem, to make one that's appealing requires an understanding of physical laws having to do, for example, with consonance and dissonance. Rajan has, through his generosity, made it possible for life scientists and engineers who know the laws of their fields to work collaboratively on mashups that we can confidently predict will result in new medical therapies, more energy efficient consumer goods, and vastly different and better manufacturing techniques. We would be here, we would be here the, all afternoon if I named all the areas in which research at the intersection of life sciences and engineering will produce abundant transformative results. This is a great day for Boston University and for the community of scientists who will use this facility and be supported by robust long-term funding. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, 
I want to express our abiding gratitude to our fellow member and cherished friend, Rajan Kilishan, whose name so fittingly graces this business. This business and this building. <laughs> it's, it's my honor to invite my colleague and friend, Rajan Kilishan, to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Walsh, Chairman Bell, President Dr. Brown, fellow trustees, honored guests. I'm very privileged and honored to be standing in front of all of you here today in the city of Boston, which is my most favorite city after my home city of Dubai. Uh, but let me tell you how it all started. About six years ago, six or seven years ago, I got a call one day from a gentleman from Boston University Alumni Relations Department and said, uh, uh, you know, the president, uh, Dr. Bob Brown and Mr. Scott Nichols, who was in charge of alumni relations, are coming down to Dubai and they want to connect with all the old alumni, so can we meet them? So I said, really? Uh, it'll be, a, of course. I said, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are still around. <laughs> and <laughs> um, so we had a meeting, and uh, the rest is history, as they say. Um, you know, on an occasion like this, I cannot but help reflecting that when I came here at the age of 21 in 9, September of 1971 from my home country in the city of Bombay, India, as a very uh, uh, I had with me a small suitcase, mostly filled with uh, homemade uh, Indian tortillas, because I was convinced I'm going to starve when I <laughs> and a few clothes. And but I had tremendous dreams. Uh, I was of course uh, given uh, great uh, lectures by my parents and grandparents that you know you are going to a land. Please uh, make, understand you are going there to study and come back ASAP. And please do not get involved in all this hippie bippy movement. And <laughs> behave yourself, otherwise you, you, know, you, will, you will get lost. So, and of course, um, uh, within six months of arriving, um, I had become a long-haired, Santana-loving American student of Boston University, <laughs> wearing bell-bottom jeans and all the rest that goes with it. So, you know, some things change in life. Some things never change. Like the f wonderful fall of Boston, of Massachusetts, the Charles River, the walk to Cambridge, and other things change. But in my case, I have to tell you, the one change that has never happened is that I always had my dreams, uh, even now as we speak. And I still carry my homemade tortillas when I'm visiting <laughs> and traveling all around the globe, which is actually more than a, a, a probably an aircraft over the last 40 years. Uh, the thing that impressed me the most at that time, you remember it was a time in 1971 when the world was very different. And coming from, a, as we were called, a third world country, had never seen uh, supermarkets, had never had telephones, uh, a 10-year uh, uh, waiting list, et cetera, um, was the amazement and the awe I, 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 I walked around over two and a half years, uh, noticing that all the great educational institutions, the hospitals, the healthcare facilities, most of them had names of private individuals and families. And I vowed to myself that one day, I will be able to do the same. So I'm today uh, very, very emotional because I finally have got the opportunity of living my dream. This building, which is now carrying my name, uh, seems to be have been done with a little bit of coincidence. <laughs> Having said that, I have to give you a little uh, anecdote out of uh, Hindu mythology. Um, 
the first institution that I had, uh, the college that I had uh, uh, given an endowment for is the Honors College. And uh, against the insistence of all the trustees and Bob, I said, please don't have my name on it because uh, we have a superstition back home that you only put your name on buildings when you go to the next life. So uh, that's how I said, please. And I, I did it in the memory of my parents. For this particular building, they insisted. And I was quite convinced that um, um, my lifespan is going to be quite short. <laughs> so I promptly called up my elder sister and um, uh, my astrologers uh, back home in India. And I said, hey, you know, what do I do? So th on the phone, they all laughed at me. They said, we thought you had been educated in the United States. Are you still believing in all this nonsense? <laughs> he said, look, let, me, let us tell you confidently, all the 30,000 or so gods in the uh, Indian, um, in the Hindu mythology, they're all with you. Just do it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I did. I just did it. Um, well, may I say something? My focus for healthcare and education uh, really is uh, a, uh, uh, a exposure to traveling uh, very frequently in the third world, as it was then called the developing world, in Southeast Asia, in the jungles of Indonesia, in the rural villages of India, in um, the plains of Africa, in the deserts of the Middle East, in the North Africa, in the Sahara. And what struck me throughout these last 40 years, there was very little, if almost nothing, uh, of any institutions, even in villages, for education and basic health care. So that's how I decided that this is the area where I would uh, do what I can. And, um, and hence, uh, my focus on these two areas. Having said this, I am very, very confident that in centuries, not that this institute will be around for centuries and will become one of the leading uh, institutions of its kind uh, on the planet. I have to tell you one more little anecdote as to why I'm so confident. Uh, with in Hindu mythology, uh, dating back more than two, 3,000 years, uh, there is a forecast that the modern Homo sapien, as what we are today, is going to evolve in 10 stages or 10 avatars or avatars. You remember the movie? The first one being the uh, pre-caveman. And the ninth one is what we are. The 10th one to come which is going to be the most pure uh, human in every respect, free of disease, uh, and live, and mankind will live in truth, honor, justice, and everybody will be equal. So having said this, I would like to uh, tell you that the 10th avatar is going to most probably emanate out of this building. <laughs> and, that avatar is called Kalki in our this thing. So, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>